with Brittany Taylor. How's it going? Hi, amazing. Yeah? Yeah. What, can you tell us what you have uh, here? Um, I'm missing the sash, but um, we're gonna give me a sash and I'm the queen of nerds. <laughs> Not funny. So on your YouTube channel, you have like, um, you have DIY jewelry, clothing, but you also have like music videos. Yes. And you also have dance stuff. Yes. And you also have parody stuff. Yes, I have like one dance video. <laughs> right. <laughs> one. Because I, my friend Mike, like, we were on the dance show now. Yeah. Right, right. You did the Super Mario Brothers yeah. dance thing. I just saw that. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Your channel's really eclectic. There's a ton of stuff going on. Can you describe exactly what your channel is if someone asked? I kind of just do whatever I want. So it's like I kind of like whatever I feel like that this week. Like, oh, I'm going to draw an art picture. Okay. Or, ooh, I want to make something. So I think it's just like just creative. Like anything that has to do with like acting or music or art. That's kind of like what... It's just I'm like I'm like I'm like if Etsy was it a channel maybe is that a, does that work I don't know. <laughs> you you just did that um, you did it maybe a couple months ago you did a song for Nerd Crush right yeah the okay. rap yeah so you did a rap for Nerd Crush and I'm a rapper hardcore <laughs> and okay so there's this idea that right now in popular culture nerds are really popular and they're really cool. Um, were you always a nerd like growing up in your yeah. entire life? No, oh my gosh, I had so little friends growing up, and I was I volunteered at the library during the summer for fun. No, it was right down the street from me, and I would like ride my bike back and forth. So yes, I have been a nerd since birth. Is it frustrating now that like, you know, um, especially on YouTube, you'll see like a lot of um, you know YouTubers or people, uh, especially uh, you know young women YouTubers, they'll kind of be faux nerdy. They'll be like you know they'll they'll claim to be nerdy, but only to kind of. Uh, hop on this popular type like trend. I don't know. I think that like like the like the definition of a nerd isn't like I think it's just someone that's being themselves. So I mean, because then it's like you're really seeing who they are. So like a lot of times people will call like let's say if you're having a silly moment, people are like oh nerd or whatever. So it's like I don't know. I don't think being a nerd's a bad thing. So even if they're trying just to figure out who they are, more power to them. So in that context, what kind of nerd are you? You know, you can be like. Uh, a technology nerd you could be like a book nerd. I'm like a film nerd I love movies and I, I'm a book nerd too <laughs> so probably books and films and anything to do with acting or movies is like camera equipment editing just Ooh, la la. yes and that probably led to you being on YouTube because it's... yeah well I think I was well, I was with an independent studio and they ran out of money but when I was there like one of the girls just taught me like the basics on like Final Cut and I remember taking like all these pages of notes so yeah, I learned editing there, but then I bought a green screen for like 125 bucks, and I used to edit everything on iMovie, like I'd film everything on my webcam. So it's been like a slow progression with me to like learn. Right, right. You mentioned that you're kind of a nerd about books and movies. Yeah. Okay. The obvious Desert Island question is... Are you talking about Hobbit? <laughs> no, I'm not talking about The <laughs> Hobbit. Okay. It's coming out soon, so I'm not sure that you're... Okay, go ahead. What? I don't know. It's your interview. I should shush. Hobbit. Oh, I have thoughts about that. You're Hobbit, turning but red. I, but I won't go into it. Am I? Yeah. I never turn red. That's so weird. Okay. Because I, inter I interrupted the flow. I know, and you totally threw me off like, the Hobbit. What the hell? I'm sorry. I'm focused. One movie, one book, Desert Island. Go. Oh, movie Gladiator, book. Oh, God. I, I think it's my problem is like I love the Harry Potter series and they got really popular. I love the Hunger Games I, before it got popular. I probably Memoirs of Geisha. I would say Gladiator and Memoirs of Big Asia would be like my two things. Gladiator. The movie. The movie. Yeah. Not the book. I don't know if there's, I don't know if there's a, a book. There's a book. There probably Memoirs is. Memoirs of Big Asia, the book, not the movie. Yes. The movie's pretty terrible. But the movie has its moments that are really like beautiful, but like has some really like really cool like aesthetics, but it doesn't compare to the book. Now, on a desert island, you're watching Gladiator all day and reading Memoirs of Big Asia all day. Isn't that two things that are like suicide cocktails? Like... That no. is such a deadly like, combo. <laughs> no, but I think Memoirs of Geisha isn't that sad. It has, like, I think, like, no, it doesn't. I mean, it has its moments where, like, are low or whatever, but it, like, overall, like, in the end, I don't want to ruin the book, but it has a good ending. You just ruined it. I've never read it. You just totally spoiled it for me. Then how, your okay. question. I'm joking. How did you get started on YouTube as a, as a YouTuber? Oh, I had, uh, I was with an independent studio, they ran out of money, came one day, they were closed, and that was like right when Lonely Girl 15 was blowing up, so my mom's like, why don't you put your videos on YouTube, Brittany? And I was like, okay. Was so like, I was just pissed, yeah, I, was, I spent six months working for this company, and they just ran out of money. 
and they just shattered it? I just came one day, and there was chains on the door, and it was closed, okay. and they still owe me money. You're kidding. No. I don't think you're going to get that money back. Anyway. It's fine. It was, it was only, like, 60 bucks, but still, like... You could have bought... I could have bought Memorization and Gladiator oh and a couple God. other things and, for $60. And kept it, like, in an emergency pack? Just yeah, in case, just in case someone else came to the island, too. Like, I could have doubles. Oh, that's a good idea. You know, because sharing isn't always great when you're by yourself. Like, if you only have two prized possessions on an island, you're not going to want to share. That's a good point. If, yeah. If that one person could be anyone, living or dead, who would it be? Who you'd share your desert island with? On the island? Oh, I th- I th- this is hard, because I would either say, like, a hot male or... I love Kate Winslet, though. I just want to meet her. But I don't know if I want to be stuck on an island with her. That's really hard. I'd probably say one of my best friends. Like, yeah. Like, one of, like, my good friends. At least I, you know, I'd have someone that I know I like on the island with me. <laughs> so you could pick, like, Abraham Lincoln or Martin Luther King Jr. But I don't know they, them. I don't have any connection to them. But they could be so interesting. Yeah, they'd be interesting for a couple days. But if you're going to be on there for your whole life, like, wouldn't you rather be around someone that, like, you know really well and you've known for years and, like, you know... That's not a bad point. Yeah. Your first option was a hot male, which... I yeah, think. it was... Well, because, uh, like, you know, like, if you're on an island, like, you know, I don't know. It'd be nice. You, of course, mean, like, uh, pieces of mail that have been heated in the sun for a long time. Or like That's a exactly boy, right? what I That's meant. What you're talking about? <laughs> yes. It's a strange choice, and it's a controversial choice, but... I, I, I don't... I You know, I live on the edge when it comes to my island choices. Right, right. And a, and a piece of post is not a person, by the way. Just so okay. You, just a piece of letter. It's a post Got it. not a person. Okay. Why do you do so many DIY tutorials on your channel? I think the DIYs are nice. It's something I could film myself. So I think it's my schedule's so crazy sometimes with projects outside of YouTube that it's like you know, I'll have like a day to make something and not like, you know, making the videos that I want to make. Like sometimes I need two or three days. I need a day of prep, day of filming, day of editing, and I need something... I can do, even though the end I end up spending like a ridiculous amount of hours on them, I think it's just something that I can do myself. So if I need to be more simplistic a week, or I just want to be by myself and create, then I do it. What's your favorite project you've made? Ooh, I probably the last one I just did where I did like a studied corset, like that was awesome. And it's like, I just want to wear it everywhere, and like I wish women would go back to wearing corsets. There's something about like the support, it just, I love it. It's so cool. It seems, and I don't know anything about a corset. Yes. But it seems like it'd be wildly uncomfortable. It depends on the corset. Like, I think, like, the old ones where they, they lace them in where you can't breathe. Yeah, but I mean, like, if one's loose, no. It's like, if anything, it just feels supported. Kind of like skinny jeans, but on your body. Right, right. I think our viewership is going to be really excited about this corset talk. I think that's probably. Why, probably why they tuned in to hear about corsets as much probably. as they could. I mean, <laughs> it's interesting. No, corsets are coming back in just like nerds. That's true. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't know ner- that for sure. I don't I'm think just nerds saying. have ever been in. But you just said nerds were in style. Would you say they were coming back in? They were never oh. in in the first place. I don't know about that. What about like Ferris Bueller and some of the old '80s stuff? There were some nerds, like like the like not um, what's the girl with like sixteen candles? Like she's total nerd. Revenge of the Nerds. Yeah, come on. But Ferris Bueller is not a nerd. He's his a, friends are. He's the coolest guy in the world. No, but one of his like isn't Cam- his Cameron. Yeah. Yeah, he was. A nerd. No, but I'm saying there's like you know. Yeah, okay. It goes in cycles. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. I'll concede that point. Yeah, and right with the nerds. You, like, you argued your I own point. I argued my own point, but you said Ferris Bueller, and that turned it well, threw me off because he's I the didn't mean Ferris in the Bueller. World. I meant the movie Ferris Bueller. Like, like, 16 Candles, like Molly Ringwald is, like, the... And, like, and, oh, my God, like, the Breakfast Club, all the misfits. Who's a nerd in that? Oh, the They're all misfits. Dude, the one Captain Crunch, and she puts the pixie sticks, and then she goes to bite into the sandwich. Like, iconic oh, moment yeah. in movies. I got you. Okay. I'll concede that point. Okay. Match point. <laughs> From five years ago, how have you seen YouTube change? Uh, it's, it changes. It feels like it changes every day. It's like that. Um, oh my god, the homepage used to be where like, they would curate it, mm-hmm. and you could actually email the editor and try to get your videos, and like whatever video was on there would be guaranteed like a million or something views, and there would be, like I don't know if it was like 16 or 20 like on the homepage, and they were constantly like, updating, and then on each category page, there was a video at the top that would be like their, um, what's it called, spotlight? Mm-hmm. It would spotlight videos. So, I mean, and then just even the brat, like, then it switched to, like, the browse page. It was, like, a grid view, right. and it wasn't all these categories. It was more, like, all the most popular views were, like, videos were in a browse page. And then the home page switched to three videos right. per, like, category on the home page to where it is now, where it's, like, a zillion categories and a zillion videos in each category, so. With the brand new update, they're kind of focusing on what you recommended for you videos. You know, it's, like, what you want to watch videos. Um, what do you think about that update? That's... 
I think it's I think it's just as the site grows, it's just it's it's making it a little harder for people to like find stuff, I think, because there's so much information. But that's why it's just really important to like keep a consistent like upload schedule because or else you might get lost in the mix because like YouTube is throwing so much information at you, like in your subscription box, they're curating that unless you click like the uploads only. So like it makes it harder and harder to find stuff you're actually subscribed to. And a lot of people argue that that, um, you know, this idea of it's making hard things hard to find. Uh, YouTube is focusing more on engagement, so they want people to go to your channel and stay on there for an hour instead of yeah. bouncing around to different channels. And subscribing, because you know, they've noticed that like people watch like 40% more videos or whatever when they are subscribed to a channel because they get invested in that right. person in their life. Right. And... Does, that make you, does that make you change how you upload videos at all, that YouTube's focusing more on engagement? No, because I think like like I all I can do is what I already do, and I'm like you might you might change like how long your annotations are, or like you know what you know you might if you're gonna make a ten minute video you may better make sure there's no legs so people don't click off like you're trying to get people to watch till the end hopefully they'll like it but um no I, I think for me I've always just kind of done my own thing so and then <laughs> it's just kind of worked for me. So you were just on dance showdown. Yes. What was that like? Because. I'll be honest with you, I, the idea of dancing, to me, is the, a fate worse than death. Yeah, I always wanted to do it, and I think I was lucky to get a really good dance partner that, like, we're friends in life now, because, I mean, you can't spend that many hours with someone, and you either, like, you honestly either make a bond you like each other, or you don't. Like, you can't, like, spend 16 hours rehearsing, like, two different times, so it's, like, over 30 hours together just in, rehear like, dancing, and not, like, you know, you either get along or you don't. Right. So, but he like never once got frustrated or angry with me or, and I think, I don't think people realize how hard it was for every contestant to do this because we're only given a certain amount of time. Like we're given the eight hour rehearsal day, we have a day off and then we perform it the next day. I mean, and then we, you know, practice on our own time or whatever. And it's up to our partners if we have like other rehearsals, but it's, <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. It seems pretty crazy. And every yeah. time I see it, it makes me, um, just dance showdown in general it makes me uncomfortable because, I God, I can't imagine dancing like. like I've that. always like, I've always wanted to do it though. Have, did you dance previous to it? No, I mean I, t I took some ballet classes when I was younger, but mm -hmm. it was like really we just never had any good dance studios. Like they were really bad. I was like five, so mm -hmm. I've always grown up loving dance movies like you know Center Stage and Flash Dance and. Uh, dirty dancing and I can go on and on like those like I remember I, my parents drove me 45 minutes to go see center stage because it wasn't playing in our town oh, wow. so like I've always grown up loving dance stuff what about dirty dancing to the Havana Nights oh one? I didn't like that one you didn't like that no. one okay well. I like all the step up ones even though they're cheesy I liked um I'm trying to think what other no, I mean, I just, like, I, I, like, yeah, or, like, um, what was the one with uh, Julia Stiles? Uh, oh, Save the Last Names. Yes. Why do I know that? Just, like, right off the top of my head, too. It was just one of those miracle things, usually, because when someone doesn't know something, then, like, the other person's like, oh, yeah, what's their name? Oh, crap, oh, crap. Yeah. Your YouTube channel, website, Twitter are, like, flooded with rainbows and unicorns and sparkles and glitter as I was researching this. <laughs> I found so much of that. Can you explain why that's happening? Um, like, my audience is, like, 83% female, and we're all, like, I, I'm just, I think it just shows everything I like on one page. Like, why not just throw it out there? Like, this is me. Like, I'm, I'm loud. I like funky things. I, anything sparkly, I have to have it. Like, this I think it's just the best way of, like, that's just me. Like, you know right away what my personality is like. Like, I'm not all black with like skulls and crossbones like that's great if that's what you're into but like I buy shirts with skull and crossbones on them but like on my page it's all like sunshine and happiness and da -da -da -da. it's a lot of happiness a lot of sunshine <laughs> you do uh, kind of a beauty channel too you have a beauty channel yeah. as well correct yes I started that not too long ago so I don't think it's but like six months or right why did you want to start a beauty channel? Because YouTube, it seems really oversaturated with beauty channels. But I think my my beauty videos are way different than a lot of the beauty gurus. This is like minor, like, I feel like I could bring, one thing I could bring is production quality. Mm -hmm. So I get my, like, my friend James to film, so I get really beautiful shots. Right. And I don't make them 20 minutes long. I'm not one of those people that, like, is gifted that people will watch for 20 minutes while I talk about my hair or whatever. Like, some of those girls can, and they're very interesting. I don't know how they do it. Right. 
but like for me, like I just wanted to make a place that's like people like me that are like in and out quick. Like they want information, they want something really cool, and it's and I feel like they can go do it too. Right. And like all these DIYs, they're so long winded that people like get a little overwhelmed because they're like, oh my god, at ten minutes and they'll tell me how to do this, and twenty minutes and they tell me to do that. Like me in two or three minutes, I explain to you how to do it, and they, these girls start sending me pics like that day. Oh. Like Luke, I went and got the wire. Like I just did this heart ring one. I have a zillion pics that people have sent me that they've already made them. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, what new DIY tutorials can people expect from your channel? Um, I have, let's see, the ones, I have, well, I have one film right now, it's just really cool, um, it's using like, it's kind of like craft yarn, but you create these really cool wrap braces of buttons. Mm -hmm. So I've been trying to do a lot of stuff that people could make for Christmas for their friends that are not going to cost them barely anything to make. So I have that one coming out, and then from there I'll just probably like go into my bag of tricks and see like, oh, what, what, I've done too much jewelry stuff, so I should do you know, something that's for your hair or for clothing or something you could do to your shoes that'd be cool or whatever. Something to do to my shoes that would be cool. Yeah, like my brother, my brother, it was so funny, like he saw my my studded, where it showed people had to tie dye and stud like like shoes mm -hmm. for Converse. And my brother literally over Thanksgiving made a pair and they're so freaking cool. Like his analytical brain like worked out the pattern ahead of time and created these really cool geometric shapes with all these different little studs. Freaking awesome. It's pretty cool. Yeah, and he has them like blue fading to green and they're, they're awesome. So my last question is, yeah. you said you have like an 83 percent female audience yeah young empowered smart female smart beautiful like just really cool girls the whole gamut real cool yeah. girls if you can give one piece of advice right now what would that piece of advice be i think it's just literally I mean, it's gonna sound cliche but i mean it, like figure out what you love in life whatever your dream is and don't stop because you're never going to be happy if you don't you will always think that you sacrificed like getting married or having kids for your dream. Like don't, no matter how hard things get, don't quit. Cause you could be like one yes away, even though you've collected a million no's. There we go. That's it. Well done. Thank you for talking to me. We've done it. <laughs> Yay. Thank you for watching my interview on newmediarockstars.com. And if you want to check out my channel, go to youtube.com forward slash Brittany Louise Taylor. Okay, okay, bye. <laughs> no, seriously, go away. No, I'm just kidding. No, seriously. I'm just joking, but really. Okay.